The first episode of the fourth seasons of The Kardashians had quite a drama-filled episode. Hey everyone, it's Hannah Fletcher and welcome back to Shared News. Let's break down the latest and very first episode of The Kardashians on Hulu. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am excited. I am very excited and hopeful for this season. This definitely was a redemption period for me in terms of, I feel like this episode was more entertaining and more packed full of little tidbits of drama and nuances and problems and you know everything that really makes a reality show I feel like this episode had that and I feel like this made up for last season so let's talk about obviously the elephant in the room let's kick it off with Courtney and Kim and where they stand now we see at the very beginning of the episode everybody is going to Cabo of course minus Courtney and the reason is because of Dolce and Gabbana but honestly not in the way that I initially thought so I thought that the feud was going to to copy paste the carryover to this particular season and that's kind of sort of not the case now basically what happened is kim and courtney watched the edits back and that is what ultimately led for them to have a disagreement and a very volatile disagreement in my opinion now when they watched the edits back it looks like kim and courtney had a very heated opinion on what the other one was saying of the other and this is obviously where we get the phone call so a very iconic moment in this episode is the kim and courtney heated phone conversation conversation. So Kim had to go back to Milan for a dinner that was part of fulfilling her Dolce and Gabbana obligation. And what I thought was very nice is the fact that Kim extended an olive branch to Courtney, but Courtney was not having it. She said that she is all dolce out and that she did not want to be a part of it. And basically Kim and Court went back and forth trying to figure out who's upset about what. You're talking about the details because it's all your egotistical selfish mind can think about. You cannot stand someone else being the center of attention. You came to my wedding, you couldn't be happy. You complained from the second you got there till the second you left. Courtney is upset about the idea that Kim is some reason jealous of Courtney having the limelight at her own wedding. And Kim is thinking that Courtney's upset over the designs and potentially risking having crossed into a territory where Courtney already crossed and saying that she was unoriginal and that the 90s are not a very uncommon look, especially now. So there was a whole lot going on. Now, the biggest question is where do you guys stand? Are you team Kim or team Courtney? Now, I will be honest. I personally think that Courtney let Kim have it in this conversation. However, I am very much on Kim's side of this. I do not think that Kim is correct when assuming that the fashion situation is what Courtney's upset about. I think that Kim is just kind of trying to maybe downplay it a little bit or hoping that Courtney's upset over the fashion aspect of things and maybe that they had similar styles. But I really think that overall, I, I have to agree more with Kim. I did not feel like Kim was in any way, shape, or form craving attention at Courtney's wedding. I mean, Courtney got a whole special out of the wedding. You know, Kim's been married several times now and she's never had a whole special um, dedicated to her. So I think Courtney having a special dedicated to her is a huge perk. I don't think that Kim was genuinely jealous from anything that I saw. Again, let me know all of your thoughts down below. And I think that this conversation was a very intense one. I mean, Kim straight up was like going off on Courtney. She was asking if Courtney was happy. She was telling Courtney that they have group chats on the side about her. She was even saying that Courtney's kids have come to her with problems, which if Courtney's kids have come to her with problems, that's a really big issue. If that's just a dagger to throw though, I don't think we should be bringing kids into the situation just to strengthen our arguments. These kids need to have their own life and their own choice as to how much they want to be involved in something like this. So that part, I was kind of a little like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, okay, tread carefully there. But I don't know, you guys. I think that this was a very intense conversation. And I love the fact that we were kind of able to kick off the season with this conversation. I very much was satisfied being able to kind of see where the sisters stood. And I really didn't think that the edits would be enough to cause these two to actually have so much of a fall out to where they look visibly upset with each other at the top of the episode <laughs> and I mean so much so too that Courtney is not on the Cabo trip that they took so yeah I I was shocked to say the very least but I'm glad that you know they they hashed it out and I really don't think that Kim was 
in any way, shape, or form having any type of jealousy of Courtney on her wedding day. However, I will say to in in Courtney's defense a little bit. Courtney's probably hopped up on hormones at this point because of all of the treatments that she's been going through. So every little thing is probably setting her off. And ultimately we know she ended up, she ended up getting pregnant. You know, the treatments worked, but I know that she was on a ton of different, like all natural holistic approaches and hormones were raging. And there's a lot going on inside the female body. So I will give Courtney a little bit of leeway because she probably was just very hormonal and any little thing that could have set her off probably Probably did. It's you and my friends and my kids and everyone against me. It's like you're just a witch and I hate you. Okay. However, that's also not an excuse though to call somebody a narcissist and a witch and other things. You know, I don't I don't really think that that was where it quite needed to go. And I think when you do things like that, that's where you run into the ultimate family problems. Also, one more point before I kind of move on to the next topic of this episode recap that I thought was kind of interesting is Courtney mentions in her interview that calling family members names and taking digs at them basically like she's been doing a lot of work in therapy and that's iconically what the family does however Courtney did it herself so if she's going to recognize it in therapy and try to move past it that's one thing but then when she does it and then she's saying that her family does that and kind of making it seem like they do that but I don't to me that's just like that's just very hypocritical so don't don't sit and say that your family takes digs at one another and says hurtful things to one another, which is entirely true. They've done it over every single season of this show. However, you are not exempt because you just did the exact same thing in the conversation to your sister. So that's kind of where I stand with that. Um, I really do love Courtney and Kim in their own different facets. I love them for different things. I love Courtney. I like to look at her family and hope to God that one day I have a family quite like hers with the love that she has. So I like Courtney for that aspect. And I look to Kim for, you know, independence. And I look to Kim for like business. And I like hearing her talk about her businesses. And I like reading articles about Kim, about skims and how much money she's accrued just by having that business over the past few years. I think it's interesting that she's a lawyer. So I like them for different reasons, but I think that this phone call was very dense and I think that there were things that were said that were just not productive towards trying to heal this relationship that I'll be frank with you guys I just don't think is going to heal I don't know I think that these two have their fair share of things somebody gets along with each of them so that's all that matters they don't have to necessarily get along with one another there are so many other siblings to to pick from so let's talk about Cabo you guys this trip looked fantastic now every Kardashian trip that's taken I wish to God that I was on this trip I wish that I could go and just join in and join the family and have a family dinner and sit next to Kris Jenner this trip just looked so incredible I did not know that Chloe had a fear of whales one of my favorite parts of the episode was Chloe and Kim seeing the whales in the ocean and they were both screaming and we have Chloe's reaction which is horrified in comparison to Kim being so excited not unlike a kid on Christmas she was so excited I did not know that Chloe had a fear of whales I, I get it I totally get it but it's just an interesting fear not many people are fearful of whales they're fearful of sharks you know if you put me in the ocean, I don't think I would be comfortable around either. So, <laughs> hmm. Chloe made it abundantly clear during the Cabo trip, especially during that dinner where she was obviously with her family. She was very, very abundantly clear that her and Tristan are not together. I need people to know that I'm single. I think you need a great photo. You know what we need for that? We need a bikini pic tomorrow. Yeah. We'll look so hot and we'll just say, tell us you're single without telling us you're single. Now I know that we're going to see more of Tristan this episode. I'm curious to see what that's going to look like. Um, I'm not thrilled to see him on my screen. However, as long as him and Chloe are able to co-parent, that's really all I can care about at the end of the day. Um, but apparently Tristan was supposed to be at Chloe's house while his house was getting all situated and she, he was supposed to be there for two weeks but he was teetering into the three week territory and he had about another week before Chloe was going to be like okay you gotta you gotta you gotta go somewhere else so I like that she was setting the boundaries and she I do believe her she also told us that you know in her interview that her and Tristan are very much not together I am not back together with Tristan hate to break it to everybody but I am not 
I appreciated the fact that we got to see that in two different forms on camera. We got to see her tell us as the audience, but we also got to see her talk to her family about it. And I think that honestly, I think that that's a really, really good thing. It looks like the Kardashians are trying to practice setting boundaries. There was even another point in the episode with setting boundaries where Chris and Kim were really talking about their intentions for the year. So obviously we know that this was filmed around the new year and they were talking about not always taking on opportunities and not always saying yes to everything from personal to family to business, etc. So I think that the Kardashians are really doing a lot of like self work with one another, which I think is very interesting to watch on camera. So I'm glad that they were like having conversations like that and sharing, sharing the boundary setting process because us people pleasers out here, it's very hard to set boundaries. So it's really nice to be able to see this family actively working on that and sharing, sharing that with us. I really like that. So boundaries and Tristan and I think that that's really good. I'm hopeful that things continue to go at the rate that they are. I like what I see with Chloe having to deal with Tristan so far and I'm proud of her. I am proud of Chloe for being able to have him solely be the co-parent. So let's just hope that it just remains in that category. Let's move on to the iconic part of this episode, the cooking competition. Now, apparently Chloe and Kylie are the best cooks of the family. All of the girls are making guac and having a cook off. The judges are none other than Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble, and I love it, I'm here for it. Apparently Kim's the worst cook, but she always plays dirty. Now her sisters, they called her a liar, they called her a cheater, they said she plays dirty. Kim says she doesn't, you know. I think that majority rules here, but I love I love seeing the family dynamic and how it plays out. I think that it's really fun that they're all super competitive with one another, but in like a fun way, you know, they're not too bad. Now, Chloe and Kendall did start throwing chips everywhere, but ultimately I thought that the cooking, the cooking segment was really fun to watch. I'm really glad that they included that in the episode. Now, I personally think that Chris having a tie between the girls was a little cookie cutter. I was like, Chris, come on, just, just go for it. Just, just say who you actually think won, but I don't know. I thought that it, there was a lot of like really funny elements and I love the fact that it was the Kardashians versus the Jenners. We had Kim and Chloe versus Kylie and Kendall and I think that that was really great. So I don't know, I, I love this. And then they went on and took thirst trap family photos and I just thought that that part was hilarious as well. I just think that, you know, what better than to have a pretty much an all girls trip minus Corey and just take thirst trap photos, you know, I mean, <laughs> Sure, why not, you know? And wrapping up the episode, I really thought that this was a great episode. I'm very excited moving forward. Um, I really thought that this was a unique type of ending. We got to hear Kendall. And first of all, Kendall and Kylie are very prominent in this episode. They're on the trip. You see them on camera together a lot. You have a lot of interviews with the girls. Like they're really helping with telling the story and I love it. And I hope that they continue to do that. Um, Kylie is definitely feeling herself and she's in her era, you can tell. But Kendall, I thought was really fascinating. She mentioned about her and Corey, which that's not really a dynamic that we see very often. I feel like we see Corey maybe more with the Kardashians than the Jenners on camera. But even then, like, I'll, I'll be honest, I forget that Corey's a part of the show and then I'll see him in the shot. And then I'm like, oh yeah, Corey's there. Like, I love Corey. He is so funny to me. Like, he is so chill. So the fact that he's just like on these trips and the fact that he does blend in with the family so well is very refreshing. And obviously like, you can tell that he's just a fun companion for Chris, but Kendall and Corey apparently had a falling out, which Kendall informed us about on camera. And she mentioned that her and Corey had a disagreement. There was a sister argument going on and basically, I guess Corey somehow overstepped or butt in. She didn't go into detail, but apparently their relationship hadn't really repaired back to the level that it once was. So it was really nice that she shared that with us because then she had a moment that she got to share with Corey and then Corey got her a little bit tipsy before the flight home, which I think is really sweet. You know, it's like that stepdad, stepdaughter kind of vibe, which I really, really love to see it. I'm glad that we got to learn about that, you know? Um, I feel like, again, we don't really get a lot of Corey and the Jenners, or really even Corey and the Kardashians. I think we see more of him with the Kardashians, though, than the Jenner sisters. But I think that it's really nice that they're incorporating him so much and that, that we're seeing different sides to Corey as well, because he is kind of there. I feel like he's kind of like Scott Disick in a way. He doesn't have a strong personality quite like Scott. Like, he's definitely more there. But I feel like he's kind of like the comedic relief and whatnot. Like, I feel like he's kind of the representative for all of us. Us amongst all 
all of these very famous, very bougie, high class girls. You know what I mean? So I, I think that it was very refreshing. I'm very glad that we got to see that. Maybe we'll get to learn a little bit more about that this season. Maybe we'll see a conversation or something like that potentially with, with Kendall and with Corey unpacking what happened. I don't know. I would love to see something like that again. I just want to see the relationship and the dynamic because I feel like this is new and it's something as an audience viewer, I would totally love to explore it. So let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let me know your favorite parts. If there is a lot of excitement that you have for this season as it's unfolding, do you think that this is going to be better than last season? Heck, do you think it's going to be the best season of the Kardashians on Hulu? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments. I'm very excited to track with it and to continue to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on it. I really, really like it and I'm here for it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment down below, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and turn those notifications on so you don't miss out anytime that we upload a brand new video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.